Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in the Pathfinder Solutions series and we are going to look at a slightly less discussed concept but very important for your JE Advanced and Olympiad preparation. So it's the viscous fluid flow between two cylinders with a very small clearance between the gap. Okay, so it's also known as Kuwait's flow. You need not know the name of the flow uh, in order to be able to tackle this problem. Okay, so please do stay till the end of the video. At the end, I'll be providing you with the uh, practice problem and uh, which I'll follow it up in the next video. Okay, so uh, these are the two questions we are going to look at. One, the basic one, which is the build up your understanding 17 from the book and then check your understanding 7, which is slightly more difficult. Okay, so uh, if you want to give it a try, uh, in case you do have the book, please do go ahead and uh, try it for 5 to 10 minutes and do come back. So here's the first question and here's the problem statement for the second one. You can pause the video as an alternative. Try to go through this statement on your own with an unbiased mind and give it a fair try and do come back where I'll explain the concept and also the detailed solution um, with multiple methods. Okay, for the second one, we'll be also looking at a, a fleeting idea of the two methods that you could have used to approach this problem. Okay, so it is rich in concept. So I hope you would be there till the end. Okay, so here's the formal wording of the first question. A cylindrical capsule can move inside a long vertical cylindrical tube filled with a viscous Newtonian liquid. Diameter of the capsule is slightly smaller than the inner diameter of the tube and the walls of the capsule have negligible thickness. Drag force on the capsule is proportional to speed of the capsule. If the capsule is empty, it rises up with a uniform velocity V1 and if the capsule is filled with liquid, it moves down with uniform velocity V2. So this is the information given if it's light, it moves up and if it's filled, it moves down. Find the expression for the velocity of the capsule if eta fraction of its volume is filled with the liquid. Okay, so with the two informations of velocities, what if partial filling of the capsule is done? Okay. Second one, how will the above relation change if eta fraction of the volume of the capsule is filled with another liquid whose density is obviously different and is k times the uh, one in the tube? Okay, so here we go. We'll Okay, a lot of things on the board as I keep always telling you, just follow my lead, don't try to read everything on your own, it would be slightly confusing, okay? So on the left top, you have the picture depicting the first condition where you could see, I've tried my best to draw the diagram, you could see a cylindrical capsule in green color, completely empty, okay? right? And it's going to go up with the velocity V1 as mentioned in the question due to the band force that it has. Right, and its weight is negligible as he said it's a thin walled one. Whereas in the case two, when you fill it up with the same liquid as that is there in the tube, it starts going down with a velocity V2 was the condition given. And you could clearly realize that in both case one and case two, <coughs> the volume of the liquid displaced by this particular outer contour of the material is the same. So band force should be marked as the same, okay? But since this body is moving down in this case, the drag force is going to act up as opposed to the downward value, which I marked in the first free body diagram. Okay, when you go to the third and the important part, which is to be solved by us, you could see that the liquid that is used to fill the capsule is only partial and it's going to have only a fraction of the weight that you have in the second case. Okay, so these are the three simple free body diagrams that you could have drawn. Your job is to solve for V3. I'm assuming V3 is downward. If it isn't, it will show up in the final answer. Okay, so for the first one, since it's a terminal velocity case or a constant velocity case, you should be able to immediately write FP value magnitude wise should be equal to BV1. Whereas in the second case, the FB plus BV2 should be equal to MG no issues. And then third one, the value of FP plus PV3 should be eta times mg. Okay. In all three cases, the secret obviously you would have seen is the common value of band force, which is independent of the object, but only dependent on the volume that it displaces. Okay. And once you combine the two equations that you have ended up getting, which is uh, adding this, this, and this, and eliminating FB value, and also you are eliminating MG value. Okay. So then you will end up getting V3 value as eta into V2 minus 1 minus eta into V1 downwards. Or you can write this term on this side and this term on this side. It all depends on the numerical values of these uh, parameters. And then you could get upwards or downwards. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. And second one, I think you would have guessed it by now. 
the same diagram as you could see for the second part where he's filling it with a different liquid. Can you see? I've tried my best to depict it with a different color. And since the density of this particular uh, liquid that you're filling is K times the density of the original liquid, instead of eta mg, you will end up having a K times of eta mg as its weight. So again, same looking equations, only difference as you could see, I borrowed from the previous uh, page, I put a K here. Again, combining this, these three, it should end up getting the expression pretty easily. So this was a very straightforward problem. You should be good enough and patient enough to draw the free body diagrams appropriately and apply the concept. Okay, so let's move on to the more tricky question. So here it is. Let's go ahead with the formal wording. A cylinder of length L can move inside a cylindrical pipe of inner radius R and if the cylinder is coaxial to the pipe like this, clearance between the curved surface of the cylinder and inner surface of the pipe is H, which is very small compared to the radius of the cylinder. Density of the material of the cylinder is rho and density of the water is rho naught and dynamic viscosity of water is eta. There are two types of viscosity, kinematic and dynamic. When you have uh, dynamic viscosity, that's eta, okay, right. Assume flow of liquid in this pipe to be laminar and the force of viscous friction F on per unit area of the inner surface of the pipe as well as of the curved surface of the cylinder is to be expressed by the following expression, which is, this is like a stress, okay, right? So shear stress or something like that, force per unit area, which is saying is eta times of average velocity in the clearance divided by the value of the H gap of the clearance. This is the information given on which he asks three questions. So these are three questions. The first one, the cylinder is held at rest inside the pipe, as you could see, with the help of a thread. He is holding it because the water is flowing towards right. If you don't use this thread, this cylinder would have moved towards right. So by holding it and applying some force using the thread, you are going to keep it at rest. And liquid is made to flow towards right at a constant rate. If the pressure on the flat faces of the cylinder on the left to the right differ by an amount of delta P, determine the tensile force in the thread and the volume flow rate of the liquid in the pipe. This is the first question, okay? Whereas for the second part, you're going to uh, invert this cylinder, right? In vertical direction and leave it. You, you cut the thread and cylinder is going to fall under gravity. So we'll come back to the formal wording of these two questions once we are done with the first one, okay? So let's move ahead. There are two ways to tackle these problems, okay? One is solving it by knowing the uh, uh, velocity profile inside the clearance. That means inside this clearance, actually the velocity uh, varies with distance from the axis of the cylinder, okay? So that function is called velocity profile. If you know that, then there is a way to solve it and that would be nothing but a quiet flow velocity profile. A lot of uh, JE aspirants and Olympiad aspirants would not be uh, familiar with this particular profile. But in this problem, you can also solve it by the assumption of average velocity formula for the drag force given in the problem. This expression was given, right? So you could either go with this or this. So to provide you with insight into both the logics, what I'll try to do is I'll try, the, uh, try to solve the first problem using the quiet flow Okay, by estimating the uh, velocity profile in this particular clearance. And for the second problem where the cylinder is kept in vertical plane and the thread is cut and this is going to fall, I'll be trying to use the information given in the question so that as a, a practice, you can reverse the two methods and try to apply them uh, on your own. Okay, so let's move on. This is the first problem where you are applying um, a tensile force using a thread and keeping the cylinder at rest. Again, I keep saying this, lot of things on this board uh, right now, just make sure you follow my lead. I'll keep explaining one by one, step by step so that the concept is very clear. So don't try to read things on your own. Okay, so what is this box? This box depicts the fluid flow inside the clearance. So uh, this is the cylinder part. Imagine uh, this is the end part of that uh, uh, pipe outside and the flow of the fluid towards right, it will be such a way that it starts from zero where it is going to be at rest in touching with the cylindrical surface. And also it has to be zero on the outline of the pipe, right? So it's obvious that the velocity changes from zero increases to certain value and then again decreases back to zero. 
This function actually will be slightly parabolic in nature, but since in the given question, the clearance gap H is very small, you can assume that this is almost linear without loss of any uh, uh, generality. Okay, so this V0 is going to have, this V0 is like an average value there or highest value you could say, not average, average will try to calculate. V0 is the middlemost velocity in the clearance. Okay, right. Now, what is this diagram? This diagram is a free body diagram of the cylinder. Okay, so this cylinder with a tension, tension force this way, and there will be a drag force on the curvilinear surface of the cylinder, which is equal to small f times of the curved surface area of the cylinder. That's what I'm writing as capital F. Eta V average divided by H multiplied by two pi RL. Okay, now, since the clearance is considered to be small, this depicts this graph depicts the variation of that velocity. Can you see that's an assumption is a linear one. So it will try to rise to the middle of the gap at H by two to the highest value V naught. And then again, it falls linearly uh, to a value of zero again. So this is the assumption that we have used valued only for very small H. What is this diagram? This is the diagram of the three body diagram of the liquid in the clearance. In this particular clearance, there'll be a cylindrical shell of liquid, which is flowing towards right. Okay, so it has two surfaces in contact. One surface is the surface of the cylinder and another surface would be the surface of the uh, pipe, which is also at rest. So there will be two drag forces, one from the inner surface contact and another one from the outer surface, both acting towards left because liquid is moving towards right. Not only that, there will be a pressure force on the liquid and also on the cylinder, which is nothing but um, excess pressure on either side, that is the difference in pressure multiplied by the area of contact. In case of cylinder, that area of contact would be pi r square, whereas for in case of this cylindrical shell of liquid, it would be equal to, I should have written 2 pi r dr, right? dr is the width and that dr itself is this h, which is the gap of the clearance, okay? so. Everything is at rest. So from the free body diagram of cylinder and free body diagram of liquid, I have to balance the forces, okay? Before we do that, we'll try to calculate the average velocity from this variation. Integration of VDH over H should give you V0 by two, simple area under the graph divided by the base, which should give you V0 by two. We'll substitute that, where V0, I told you, is the highest value of the velocity in the clearance. And what about the free body diagram of the liquid here? If the free body diagram of the liquid is used here, you could see delta P into two pi RH should be two times F, capital F substituted from here. Can you see that? And then V naught value you rearrange comes out to be this number. So the value of flow rate, which was asked as the first uh, calculation is nothing but two pi into RH, which is the area of cross section of this liquid that is flowing multiplied by the average velocity, which is V naught by two. So since I have V naught value, I'll substitute that in this and I end up getting the expression, which is the answer for the flow rate within that clearance gap. Now I'll use the free body diagram of the cylinder here in the third expression, which is tension going to give you the value of force into the pressure difference force, which is this capital F again substituted for this number right here. You could see delta P into pi R H would be capital F and delta P into pi R square. So I take that common part then I end up getting H by R plus one. Since uh, H by R is a very small quantity, this almost is equivalent to delta P into pi R square. But since the expression is to be calculated up to uh, a pro proper accuracy, this would be the extra part that will be there. Okay, right. So this is the solution by knowing the velocity profile or by estimating it. You could have done this problem in a much simpler number of steps by even avoiding these calculations, which is what we'll do for the second part of the problem. Okay, so let's try to go ahead and read the formal wording of the second problem, which we'll try to solve it using um, uh, the expression that is given in the question without actually knowing the velocity profile. Okay, so the pipe is closed at one end. That means this outside pipe is closed at one end and filled with liquid and is placed on the table. The cylinder is held at the top coaxially with the pipe and fully immersed in the liquid. That means you're just making this vertical. If the cylinder is denser than the liquid, it will start moving downwards. And after it is released, in a short time, acquires a steady downward velocity. So very quickly, it acquires a terminal constant velocity. Deduce suitable expressions for this steady speed of the cylinder. This is the question. 
And the third one is nothing but the same question repeated, only difference being the cylinder is less denser than the liquid. Okay, so if you solve second one, I think third one would be pretty straightforward. So as I promised you, for this second part, we will avoid the q flow calculation and we'll use only this in, uh, expression to get to the answer. Okay, so I hope you're ready. Here we go. There are two parts to this problem. First is to understand that when the cylinder is actually falling under gravity with a constant velocity, you need to be able to estimate the velocity relation between the fall value of the cylinder and also the flow of the liquid in the clearance. Remember, as this cylinder goes down, it displaces the liquid that is in front of it. And that displaced liquid squeezes itself into this clearance gap with certain speed. Okay, right, I hope you can picture as that. So just imagine within next dt seconds, due to this velocity v falling downward, there is a length of v dt of the liquid that would be completely displaced. Where will that liquid go? That liquid will squeeze itself into this gap in the upward direction and assume that speed or the flow velocity is v naught. Okay, right? So. Now, this time the V naught that I'm going to use in this gap is not the middle velocity, but the average itself. I'm using V naught as the average velocity so that I can use it in the expression that is given. Okay, so don't con get confused from the V naught of the previous expression. Okay, so conserving volume of the fluid, area of the cylinder multiplied by this distance gives you the volume that is displaced and area of the cross section of the clearance multiplied by the v naught dt gives you the volume squeezed into the clearance. Both should be equal to each other in the next dt seconds. That should give you the relation between the flow average velocity in the clearance is equal to r divided by 2h multiplied by the actual terminal velocity of the cylinder, which we are supposed to find. This is the uh, red colored v is something that we have to find. So your estimation of the drag force per unit area that is given in the question should be eta times of v naught by h where v naught i assumed is the average velocity in the clearance divided by h since i have to eliminate v naught in the, my final expression i'll put this value here and keep this one for my rest of the calculations so i have estimated the force per unit area on the cylinder and also on the walls of the tube also on the liquid all the three if when i draw the free body diagram i'll require that force and that force per unit area comes out to be this expression in terms of the v that i have to find out okay so i hope till here it's very clear let's move to the next slide where we'll draw the free body diagrams okay so again a lot of things on the board just follow my lead so free body diagram of the cylinder this cylinder as it falls down it's very clear, it has its weight, which is density into volume of the cylinder. L is the length of the cylinder I'm taking into G, mg I have written, okay? And if the pressure difference from the uh, bottom and the top of the cylinder is delta P, then the upward force due to the pressure difference would be delta P into pi R square. Not only that, this curved surface of the cylinder will experience a drag force given by force per unit area multiplied by the curved surface area, which is, I think, in the upward direction because the cylinder is going downward. Pretty straightforward, this one. Now come to the liquid in the clearance free body diagram, okay? So there is a liquid in this clearance which is squeezed and going upwards. Please understand that it's going upwards. And that one's FBD will contain two forces. One, because of its contact with the cylinder, which is small f into 2 pi RL, Another one, because of the contact from the outside tube, which is at rest, which is F into, there is a slight increase in the area, right? That should be 2 pi into R plus H. Which the radius of that thing should be R plus H into L. Both act downward because this liquid is getting squeezed in the upward direction as I depicted it in the previous slide. Its own weight, which is rho naught into the volume of this shell of a cylinder, 2 pi R H L into G, and the pressure force, what I wrote on the cylinder is the delta P multiplied by area of contact. Here, the area of contact would be only this much part, which is what? 2 pi R dr, again dr being h, which is very small. So again, vector sum of all these forces and vector sum of all these forces should be zero is what I'm going to write one by one. Okay, so if you carefully observe for this, 
the upward force upward force should be equal to this downward force this is the expression for this diagram and for this diagram those expressions have written here here what we could have done is this 2r plus h that you end up having here i can approximate it to the value of 2r because this 2 this r and this r makes it 2r plus h i can almost make it as 2r you could have left this as uh, on its own but you'll not get the expression that is given in the book okay so which tells you based on the approximations taken the final look of the expression might change but the order of the final answer remains the same you could have continued like this itself okay right so these two things if you carefully observe delta p is something that can be avoided and that is what i'll try my best in the next steps so i'll just cancel the uh, common terms on both sides for this expression i'll end up getting this and for this expression also a similar cancellations keeping delta p into r the same thing so i'll eliminate delta p into r by subtracting the lhs and rhs of these two which will give me this blue colored addition of 2f into 1 plus h r by h is equal to rho minus rho naught into rg okay right so let's move forward we're almost there Okay, right. So uh, once you get the value of f, you realize you had an expression for f in the previous page, this one. Okay, right. And that is what I will try to borrow here also. Okay, right. So the expressions from the previous page combined with this expression. So this f and this f, I can equate to each other. And that's how I get the value of v equivalent to the one that is given in the book. This R plus H that is in the denominator, we got it because I could make out some approximation. So when I tried this problem for the first time, I did not get the exact expression in the book. See, this R plus H is almost equivalent to R because H is very small. So even if you had got H cube by capital R, it should be an appropriate answer. Okay, so, and some of the students might get R plus two H also, it will not matter. It will be the same as the original answer are given in the book. So that's why if some of you study the Kuwait's flow and try to take the actual parabolic flow that is going to happen between this clearance, then they'll try to get the answer. They'll get an expression which is dissimilar from this. But when you make the approximation, all of those answers will tend to the same value. I expect you to give it a try and it would be a worthwhile effort. Okay. So once you're done with this, you want a slightly uh, more practice on the flow of the fluid between the gaps of a cylinder, then I would uh, request you to go through two of my videos that I have already done on rotation viscometer, right? Where you have uh, the cylinder actually rotating instead of translating in the clearance, okay? So this is the answer for the third one, where if the cylinder is going up, just rho minus rho naught expression will be replaced with rho naught minus rho, okay? So, right so here are the two videos that i was talking about on the kuwait's flow but this time rotational one so i picked a problem from irido i tried to explain the complete understanding of uh, the expressions used by irido in that question and also solve the question along with that i gave a follow-up video on the challenge of rotation viscometer where again the clearance uh, he, the beauty of this problem is the clearance is actually not going to be small. So here uh, you are supposed to find the uh, profile of that angular velocity. So this was a very old video on my channel. So please make sure you refresh yourself if you are new uh, to this channel with these two videos. Okay. So here comes the practice problem. Again, talking about Irodo, another gem of a question from Irodo, where the clearance is actually large enough and you're supposed to find out the velocity profile and you'll realize what kind of velocity profile will happen if a cylinder is moving inside another cylinder. Okay, right. So try this one out. It would be a worthwhile experience for you. I'll come up with a solution in the Irodo Select Solution series. Okay. In case you have liked this video, please do check out the rest of the uh, Pathfinder solution series. The links of the playlists are in the description below. And also other parallel series that have been running on this channel, like Olympiad Workout, uh, AITS Select, and Resolved series, where all the uh, toppers doubt are, doubts are generally discussed. Okay, right. So Olympiad Workout series is a series which contains a decent number of questions which target the Indian Olympiad and national uh, international Olympiad uh, series. So that is also running. ATS Select series takes the uh, select problems from the All India Test series of the famous institutes, four or five national level institutes and picks those problems and 
tries to explain concepts through them. Okay, so um, in case you like this, please do give it a like, share the content with your friends on relevant Telegram and WhatsApp groups. It would be of great help to my channel. Of late, I have not been uh, very uh, uh, continuous, uh, continuously posting uh, videos on this channel. The reason being I've been very busy, but I'll try my best to keep uh, producing whenever I produce the video with a come up come up with the quality contents. So uh, in case you are new to this channel, I request you to watch three or four videos um, per day and then decide whether you want to subscribe to my channel or not. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you uh, you would like to do that and uh, also press the notification bell icon so as to receive regular updates uh, so that you don't miss out on quality content that will come your way okay so thank you and see you in the next one